This, this is a six year ownership review of my 2015 Fiesta ST. I've done these every uh, year. First few years I've owned this, I did a lot of re uh, reviews of mods I had done, and, you know, my tunes and then driving the car, POV drives, showing acceleration, talking about mods. Um, you know, a lot of how to's. And so this car's kind of been done for several years and just really for the last three years, I've just really been enjoying it. I put about 6,000 miles a year on it and, uh, among my other cars. So it's got a little over 40,000 now. And, um, but I've been doing these yearly reviews, just talking about, okay, it's been another year. I've had the car six years now, so they've been popular. I've gotten a good amount of, a good amount of uh, traffic on those reviews. So I thought, hey, I'm it's six years now. I'm going to do another one. So this is my six year review of my Fiesta ST. And it's going to be a little different from the last ones, hopefully more interesting and hopefully not too long. Um, but yeah, I've owned this car six years. I've owned it longer than uh, any other car I've had uh, ever, except for our minivan, which we had for 14 years. But I didn't primarily drive that. Um, and let me start out by saying the one thing I've hit on this car uh, um, that I've, I've mentioned as a criticism in my last two reviews, which was my four-year and five-year, um, was the traction. And um, that was ignorance on my part. I've got all the bracing. I had 215 tires, which is one size wider than stock. Um, but I had had old tires. And what I did, and this is just because my life's busy and I don't live for my car. I just, you know, enjoy it from time to time. You know, it's my hobby. Um, what I kind of didn't realize is as I was um, increasing power on this car, my tires that they were wearing out and my traction was decreasing. And really, I think on most good performance tires, your traction is going to like be optimal for the first five or 10,000 miles. And then it's pretty much gone. And that's what happened to me. That's why I had said over and over in my last reviews that I had traction problems and that was the only problem with this car. Um, this car has 304 wheel horsepower, which is probably 350, 340, 350, something like that crank. Uh, it is 337 torque dynode, uh, which, and you can look at my old reviews and see POV drives in my dyno sheets and all that, which is, you know, probably 370, 380 crank torque. So, you know, all going through one wheel, no, I don't have LSD and there's reasons for that I've discussed elsewhere, but I just was having trouble with getting 100% traction. I could get 80 or 90% traction in first and second gear, but not 100. Well, I did review these tires. I bought them recently. These are Federal um, RS Pros, uh, 595 RS Pro tires. And, um, you know, this would really apply to any new tire because when I had my previous tire, it was the same, but I got full traction again. Um, and again, so that sort of just going backwards from what I said before, the issue being traction, like, yes, if you modify a car with one wheel drive, then, um, you're going to have traction issues. And again, I had most, I had most traction because of the braces, because of the tires, I got about 80 or 90% traction. But now that I've got brand new tires, I once again have 100% traction in first or second gear in any gear. I can just go in the car and it's kind of magical again. So I just want to say that just off from the beginning um, in terms of like the old reviews, um, tires are the key and not just what tires you get, but having new tires makes a huge difference. So let me talk about this car briefly. And then I thought it would be fun. I'm not a huge Doug DeMuro fan. I think he's brilliant, but you know, I don't like watch all his videos, but I do um, think his 10 categories for like reviewing cars is pretty standard. So I'm going to go through those very briefly with this car and talk about each one of those things. Uh, and then, but first I just want to say something about this car. Um, one of the favorite cars I've ever owned and should never have sold was my 1991 SER. It looked just like that, red. It only had 120,000 miles and I owned it about 20 years ago. Found it on the back of a lot, on the back of a Chevy lot. Kind of beat, but in decent shape. Low miles, uh, it was like $2,000 and uh, drove it a few years and some things started breaking and I just sold it because I have four kids and I needed something more practical so I bought a Maxima. I never should have sold it and if I ever found a good one, I would probably buy it. They're like unfindable. I say all that to say, I really feel like if you know anything about the SER, the first generation SER, 91 to 94, those cars were super special because Nissan took a compact economy car that was just, you know, milk toast, vanilla. No one cared about them. There was a zillion of them. And they did something really special to the engine 
and the suspension, and then they just put a few little special styling cues in it. And it was one of the most special cars, I think, compact cars that's ever been made and surprised everybody. And that car, I remember the first time I drove it off the lot for my test drive, I was like 10 seconds in, I got to have that car. It was so special. This car, I have said this over and over, and I've heard a few other people say, this really is the rebirth of that special, you know, very rarely coming along type of car, the SCR first gen. Um, it was an economy car, but they did it right by adding some subtle things, a, a powerful engine, this is a Fiesta, but they put in the 200-ish horsepower engine. They suspension tuned it in a way that is just uh, incredible. Even like, go back to Doug DeMuro and his, um, he did a recent video on like the top 10 cars that are awesome that you can afford and Fiesta ST was like number seven. So that tells you a lot that even such a cheap car is still regarded as how special it was in this car. It's stealthy. It goes under the radar, just like the Sentry SCR did. It's economical, just like the Sentry SCR was. Um, practical. It can fit a lot of people. It can fit a lot of cargo. Reliable. And I think, just like the SDR is really a cult classic, I think in 20 years this is going to be a cult classic because there's so few of these. They only made 4,000 a year, so there's 20-ish, maybe 22, 24,000 in America. And they don't make any many anymore. A lot of people don't know what they are, just like the SDR. So I believe in 20 years this is going to be a cult classic, um, if not already becoming one. So let me, uh, having said that, that's sort of just a quick intro. And I, spend, I want to spend the last few minutes here just talking about the, the categories that Doug DeMuro 10 categories as I do my six year review of this special car. Okay, so first styling, Doug gave it a six. I'm not giving scores, but I will just say styling, it, it's kind of cool. I mean, I've done some things to mine, you know, the wheels and everyone asks what wheels these are. These are, these are Rota 17 by eights with a 40 offset. Um, you know, they got the red calipers and the, you know, the fancy wing. I've put some Boomba risers on mine. You know, I've done a bunch of little appearance mods. I did the, I painted this. Uh, gray and I added the diffusers and I have an exhaust and I have mud flaps but even with all that I mean it, it looks like a little you know micro machine is what my friends call it but still when I go to a car show people just walk by this car I mean sometimes they're like oh there's a Focus ST most people just have no idea and that's fine so styling I mean I think it looks good does it stand out the way that does no the way that CRX does no but eh, it's okay not, not going to say a lot about styling. I don't think it's beautiful. I don't think it's hideous. It just is. Um, acceleration, Doug gave it a two. Um, you know, just like the SCR, when I drove this off the lot for the test drive, I was just within 10 seconds. I was like, I have to have this car. No, it's not the fastest car off the, off the, off the line. Uh, it's zero to 60, like seven seconds. Um, this car would go zero to 60 as I have it in under five. I'm confident if I beat on it. I've, um, I've taken new Mustang EcoBoosts. Uh, with, you know, pulling a car two length ahead from, you know, t 10 to 60 miles an hour, uh, keep up with Mustang GTs, you know, Subaru STIs, all that stuff. So I'm pretty confident this would do zero to 60 in under uh, five seconds as it is now with the modifications I've done. And again, don't ask because I've look at my look at my channel. I've extensively documented all of that stuff in the past. Um, so yeah, this can be modified to be very, very quick. This car is very, very quick. Um, so acceleration, even though, again, even in stock form, zero to 60, seven seconds. When I first drove this, I remember I left the, the dealership lot, I let it warm up and then I floored it. And it wasn't the fastest thing in the world, but the feeling of this car, because it's so special, transmission, suspension, engine, all together. I thought, oh man, this, <laughs> I remember smiling and I still do that six years later. Wow, what a special, special, special car. Um, uh, next thing is handling. Doug gave this a six. That's where this car shines. It just handles incredibly. Not going to say a lot about that. My car, I've done a bunch of bracing. It's lowered. It has fat tires. Done some other things. That really is the, the most special thing about this car. The way the suspension is interacts with the driver and vice versa and steering, just all those things. It is a marvelous track car. I don't track it, but a lot of people do. And that is where it really shines. Fun factor, just, you know, jumping into that. Uh, Doug gave it an eight. I would definitely say it's up there. It's just such a fun car to drive. I've had this six years. Guys, every time I drive it, still, I just smile at some point. That smile is sort of like, 
unexpected. Like I floor it and I'm like, oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, this feels so darn special. Um, so yeah, fun factor is huge in this car. Such a fun car. And hey guys, I mean, they named it Fiesta, which means party. So if there's a car to have fun in, it is a Fiesta ST. Cool factor, Doug gave it a five. I'm gonna say, meh, you know, um, whatever. Is it cool? No. To me it is, you know, to car enthusiasts, the, the very few that even know what this is, they're like, oh, it's a Fiesta ST, but most people don't. Even again at car shows, this just gets ignored. People just don't know if they drove it, they'd be like, dude. But they don't, and I, I kind of don't care. It's like it goes under the radar, it's stealthy. That's, that's fine. I will say while we're talking about fun factor and cool factor, before we close, I just wanted to pull this up. This is an article that back in 2013, 14, when this was new, it won 22 awards, uh, Rookie of the Year, which is huge for a brand new car in the US, that is. And it shows here all the awards. You know, and there was just a lot of journalists that bought these after they drove it. Just what I'm trying to say is just the specialness again. Cars don't just win 22 awards in their first year of production. This did. So it's super special. Okay, let me move to the daily categories and I'll wrap it up quickly. Uh, features, Doug gave it a four. Um, you know, meh, whatever. Uh, you know, it's it's got it's got good features. I mean, this car has a sunroof, it's got navigation, has Recaros, they're heated, leather wrapped stuff. Um, it has heated mirrors. I mean, it's got some decent features. Navigation, I think I mentioned that. Decent sound system, not great. But, um, you know, it's okay. I mean, whatever for what you pay. These were 26 new in this condition with all these modifications. I'm sorry, with all these options, the sunroof, the nav, the Recaros. Um, you could get a cheap one for 22 new. I paid 19.5 for it in 2015. It had 4,000 miles. So, you know, for that range of price, you know, it's, it's probably got the right features. It should. Comfort, I will say this is an extremely, extremely comfortable car. Um, the suspension is great. Doesn't bother me at all. These Recaro seats are amazing. The heated feature is fantastic. And um, very, very comfortable car. Would you want to sit in the back seat? No. Probably not. I mean, if I slide the passenger seat up, I can fit one of my kids back there easily. But, you know, it's a compact car. Um, but comfort's still very good. Doug gave it a five. I'd put it up there somewhere. Quality five uh, is what Doug gave it. I'm gonna, I'd say it's probably higher than that. This car, I've had it six years, only one thing broke. It was my air conditioner under warranty a and my actuators broke, but that breaks on a lot of Fords and they're like $15 and you can replace them very easily. So other than that, no issues. I know people that have 200,000 miles on the stock engine, stock clutch, stock transmission. They're just, it's just a war horse. This car, maybe we should call it, I don't know, war horse would be the right word for this little car, but you know what I mean. This thing is just solid. Reliability wise and quality wise, um, practically Doug gave it a six. I'm gonna say it's, you know, super practical. Uh, this gets, um, you know, very good gas mileage. Again, you can fit stuff here in the back. I mean, hatchback is pretty big. Once you fold these, these seats in, uh, I can fit my guitar in there and everything I want. Um, so, you know, it's very versatile. And then finally, uh, the last category Doug has is value which is 10 and um, you know, yeah, 10 for, I mean, for the money. I don't know what these cost now, but if you can get a good one, you get it. Um, let me close and say this, great car. If I could say one thing about this car that makes it great six years later, I'd say it does everything except turn heads, but who cares about that? It really does everything, guys. It is quick, it is engaging, it is fun. It has plenty of good features. Like I said, if you get the heated seats, the, the seats, uh, the, the Recaro seats, the navigation, um, it, you know, so you got performance, you've got features slash a, a decent car that doesn't feel like a toy, you know, that's a, a, a junk, you know, a bottom basement, bottom barrel parts, you know, it's, it's quality when you open and shut the doors. I mean, it's quality. Um, just all those little things, auto down windows. So you've got performance, you've got quality, you've got versatility. Again, you can fit a lot in this hatch if you put these back seats down. You fit a lot. And then economy. Um, I'm getting 30 miles per gallon consistently with an upgraded turbo and all the bolt-ons and a tune around town, 30 MPGs, and that's goosing it a lot. And on highway trips, I've gotten 38. 
in this car, and it has 304 wheel horsepower. I'm getting 38 highway miles per gallon. So it just does everything, and then when it gets into the modification realm, these are very easy to mod. The aftermarket support, there's tons of it. It's cheap to mod. You can, the bang for the buck, you just spend a little bit of money. I mean, you spend $300 on a used access port, you instantly go from 200 to about 280 or 290 foot-pounds of torque for $300. I mean, it's just the bang for the buck in these cars is so, so, so good. You get such good results for so little money. And uh, it just does everything well. And that's why I think the Fiesta ST is going to be a cult classic one day. And in the meantime, it's just super enjoyable to drive every single time. Here we are 2,000 days later. I still love this car. So uh, that's my six-year review of my Fiesta ST, giving it some love. And uh, well, I'm, what more can I say? Super great car. Get one if you can. If you're looking and you find one, don't wait. Get it before someone else does. This is not one to go home and think about. Hope you enjoyed the review. Check out all my other reviews for more stuff. Lots of details on everything I just discussed and more. Take care. Peace to you.